Um, so, so I'm going to start the session uh, with something which I, I, I know that, you know, uh, I've seen the class six textbook, um, science textbook in uh, Tamil Nadu, and that is full of like the, elect the chapter on electricity is starts with things like, you know, what is electricity and what is current, uh, what is voltage, what is resistance. And I'm saying that I could teach that from the textbook or I could get students to the lab and start with very hands-on things. And I've done it many times. I've done it in uh, many Isha Vidya schools. I've been coming to Isha Vidya school since 2017. And earlier on, I used to carry the same thing which I have here. I used to carry it with me and I used to, I, I'm just going to repeat what the way I used to approach it. So what I would do is uh, I would, like let's say class six students or class seven students, I would give them, like we would talk a little bit about electricity and um, like, you know, we'll discuss some very basic theory that electricity is flow of electrons. Uh, so one easy way to think of electricity is that, let's say this is a tank full of water. And the moment I attach a wire, water starts flowing. And now this water can do some work. Uh, and what work can, can this flowing water do? Just like, you know, flowing water can spin a wheel in the real world. These flowing electrons can light a bulb, can turn a motor, uh, you know, light an LED. That's the kind of things it can do. And then I'm saying that the whole thing about hands-on learning is I would give the kids all these things. Okay. I would not even tell them what, what all this is. I would give them all of this stuff and I would tell them just play. And all children, class six students, they will all play. And there is no problem with this because I'm only dealing with maximum six volts here. So there is no, no, no risk. If I, even if I touch it, there is no risk of, you know, current and all. And we will talk about safety also with the children later. Like I can touch this one, uh, this wire, but I should not touch the, the socket in, in the wall. So safety is also very important. We should definitely tell children about safety, but I'm saying what, what I would see is let, let's just start with something. Okay. I, I have seen children do this many times. So they will just take something and start making something. Okay. And they all know this basic circuit. Okay. So they will make a bulb glow. Okay. And then I, you know, so here is my, my thing that I'm now saying that I have a tank full of water or in this case, a tank full of electrons. And now my electrons are flowing and they are, doing some work, which in this case is, is lighting this bulb. And then what I have seen is that children in different groups will do all kinds of things. Okay. So some, 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 uh, student will make this kind of a circuit. Okay. So if you saw earlier, uh, the bulb, is so much less brighter than the previous circuit, right? So the previous circuit, this was the circuit and this is the intensity of light. Okay. And if I'm putting circuit like this, then the light intensity is significantly less. So I'm saying that, and I used to do this because children will make all kinds of circuits. So if some, somebody had made this kind of a circuit, the, the question to ask is, I mean, one of the questions you would ask is, so what can I do that my bulb is as bright, both of them are as bright as when I only light up a single bulb, right? And I'm saying now you've posed the challenge and you can let the children explore uh, and maybe somebody will come with the right solution. And if not, then you can explain that what I can do is if you notice this circuit, the way this circuit is, is functioning is I've got electrons flowing. So I've got electrons flowing in this black wire. They are coming here. They are coming to this bulb. Then they are going through this yellow wire and then coming to this bulb and from this red wire back to the battery. And that's my circuit. Now, if I want that both the bulbs should glow at the same intensity, then the idea is that I should co connect both of them directly to my batteries.
uh, it's become a bit of a jumble with the wires but basically what i've done now is i have connected both my bulbs both of them are connected to my my battery right and now they are glowing with the same intensity and i'm saying that what i have just done is my first circuit was a series circuit and my second circuit is a parallel circuit but because now i have done something hands on hopefully they have a better appreciation that in the first the electrons were flowing in one direction and now it's parallel because both both the bulbs are connected to my battery and this is a I mean, it's all there in class 6 textbook but now you are doing it practically and then you can you know ask more questions so for example in this circuit what will happen if i remove one bulb so if i remove one bulb this bulb is not glowing but this bulb is glowing right if i put it back both my bulbs are glowing so i'm saying that rather than um, you know talking theory i can get them to do experiments and this is where you know the thinking part comes in because then i can ask more questions and that is where as a teacher i am building concepts i am not just asking them to mug up the definition of what is a series circuit and what's a parallel circuit because i can ask questions like i can say okay so so let me change the circuit back to the series circuit so now i'm saying my my current or whatever the electrons are going to flow in in one direction right so i have so now my electrons are flowing in one direction from the black like this one line and now i can ask a question again so what will happen if i remove one bulb so if i remove one bulb both of them stop working because it's a it's a series circuit but i'm saying i need not stop here i can ask them more questions i can ask them that if if this is the circuit and this is what happens if if i remove one bulb both of them stop working and in the other one the parallel circuit even if i removed one bulb the other ones you know kept working my question could be so what do you think is the circuit in your house or in the school and that's where you know the thinking starts then that and if the children are thinking then they will know that okay in the school when one bulb gets fused the other things keep working so if one bulb get fused and other things keep working what is that circuit so that's a parallel circuit then so then they are joining the dots and they are saying yes you know in my house in my school the circuit is a parallel circuit and then you can ask them more questions so which is a series circuit it's possible that you know the lights that that are put during diwali and all sometimes now nowadays it's also parallel but sometimes those those are in series and that's why if one bulb stops glowing the entire uh, you know the chain of bulb stops glowing and i'm saying you can push yourself you can come up with more questions so i can ask questions like okay so i had this tank full of electrons okay and this is a series circuit and the other one was a parallel circuit in which circuit will will the electrons run out faster or in which circuit will my battery run dry faster and now i'm saying if they are using their common sense then they can see that in this because the light intensity is much less probably this will last longer and in that because i was connecting both the bulbs directly to this battery pack and they were both glowing with same high intensity probably in a parallel circuit this will uh, uh glow uh, uh, this will run dry faster okay and i'm saying and I i'm showing you all this because we are essentially in all of electronics that's all we are going to play with we are if we understand the concept of uh, what is voltage what is current what is resistance just with these three things i think some 60% of the equipment in atl you will understand that's why i'm spending time on this and that's why i think it's very important to build this kind of you know fundamental knowledge so let's do another one okay so i'm saying I, and i i i used to do all this so i'm going to remove the bulbs and i'm going to get a led and i have and i i can do i can do so many questions here right so i'm saying that in in any circuit what is the most important thing 
the most important thing is the source of power source of energy so i'm saying i'm not even using things like voltage and current i'm just sticking with you know electrons or energy so i'm saying here was a uh, you know tank full of energy and by connecting the wires i was doing something such that energy started flowing and it was that energy was doing some work so now i'm saying that i can ask questions like can i have some other source of energy instead of my battery and then of course i mean you know if children are thinking and if they are connecting it with their textbook and if they have done some hydel power versus solar power versus wind power then they can say that i can change this and i can put a, a you know solar battery here and then it's still a source of energy but now it's a renewable source of energy and even here i'm using rechargeable cells these are different from the normal cells that you have so i'm saying just in this very simple three components i can cover that whole syllabus of uh, i think 6 7 and 8 uh, in in a far more deeper way and even if they are going all the way to ohms law and all i can discuss all of this with the, you know with this very basic circuit so this is the second activity i would give i would give them this so we started with a bulb now we have got an led and again i would tell them okay now you know light up the led so they will you know normally do something like this and it's still it's the same kind of a circuit you know that all my uh, you know electrons are flowing but my led is not getting lit up and that's where then you ask children to just experiment okay tell me how will you light it up and in in some groups it will be lit if i'm you know running five groups in parallel and i've given all of them then i will see that in some of them it will get lit and in some of them it will not get lit okay now by experiment they have figured out that oh you know i had to change the plus and minus and then i can ask the same question i can say does this happen in the bulb so in the bulb if i if i put like this the bulb is uh, lighting up and if i change positive and negative in the bulb it's still lighting up but in the led if i am joining the plus with the minus it doesn't light up but if i flip the polarity it will light up so now i have i have explained to them something that in some electronic components when my energy is flowing when my electrons are flowing i need to be careful about the flow the direction of the flow in some components like the bulb it doesn't matter in some components like led it will matter and if you understand this fundamental thing then later on when we get into more complex stuff and something will not work you will understand that oh in this component it's not working because maybe maybe uh, uh, the flow of you know this this electron flow is not in the right direction but here is the fun part i have seen this many times with classic students once i have done this then i typically give them a motor and i ask them to predict okay i ask them to predict that do you think in the motor polarity or plus minus will matter or not and in class 6 you know children who have not done it some will say yes 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 it will matter some will say no it will not matter okay and then of course you know that in motor it's it's a very peculiar thing if i put plus minus like this my motor set definitely works but what's the difference if i switch my polarity i mean you know this right the direction will change so if i do it like this the direction is anti clockwise the uh, motor is spinning like this but if i put it like this it's running clockwise right so suddenly just by doing these very three basic things i have explained so many things to them and now i'm saying this is where uh, you know this whole uh, fun based thing happens now i'm saying i've done this uh, with with students so i ask them to imagine that imagine that i have got two such motors okay uh, and let's say there are wheels instead of fan so i've got two motors so there is one motor here and one motor here and now i ask them to imagine that can you in your imagination build a car which will go forward and reverse right now they have just seen it that if i simply flip the polarity i can make this motor go forward or reverse so they are very easily able to connect that yes 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 i can make a car which will go forward reverse simply by flipping changing the plus minus 
So two, two motors with wheels and I can make the car go straight and forward, straight and reverse. Then you can ask the second question. I'm going to ask you. Okay. So my question is, so I now know by just by doing this simple experiments, I know that I can make this car go forward and reverse by flipping the polarity. Now I want you tell me, I want the car to go left and right. What do I do? Same thing. I've got, I've got a source of energy. I've got two motors and in the two motors, I've got wheels. I know by flipping polarity, I can make the car go forward and reverse. My next question is how do I make it turn left or right? What do you think? Rajivaka, since you are closest to the mic. See, you've got yourself into trouble. You, you've got your own mic, so I will always ask you. How do I make my car go le left and right? Or anyone else, uh, uh, please. Anyone who's sitting close to the mic, the other people can answer and they you can repeat it. Yes, sir. They are discussing. Okay. All right. Sana, please repeat your question. My question is that I describe to you a car. I describe to you a car in which I said I've got two motors. And I said, I've already discussed how to make this car go forward and reverse. And I think the students will be able to say that you can make it go forward and reverse by changing the plus minus. Yes, because we just saw that, right? We just saw it in this motor that just by changing the plus minus, I can make the, make the motor turn clockwise or anti-clockwise. So I'm saying till from here, whatever we've done so far, we know that I can make this car go forward and reverse. And now my question is, I want the car to go right and left. What do I do? Uh, Anna, just, uh, we just stop one motor and then um, give... Anna, can you hear? Yes. Yes. Uh, if I want to uh, turn left, then I just give the uh, power supply to the uh, right side motor and uh, stop the left side motor, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm saying, uh, uh, Rajaka is saying that we will supply, let's say I'm not using any other words, electricity. Okay. Let's say we'll supply electricity to this, this motor and not to this motor. So this motor is not moving. This motor is moving. My car will turn. Yeah. And likewise, if I wanted to turn the other way, I will not supply electricity to this motor. I will supply to this motor and my car will turn. And as you can see right now, this is exactly what will happen. If I do this, if I supply electricity to this motor and not to this motor, this motor will run and the car, it will really, it will only turn 360 degrees. This is exactly what will happen. It will turn 360 degrees. Now, my next question is that I have this car. Now you figured out that if I give electricity to one wheel, this wheel, let's say, and not to this wheel, my car is going to turn 360 to the left. Now, I don't want to turn 360 because it will go round and round. I want my car to turn, let's say, 30 degrees. What do I do? Actually, for this, we add potential meter. So don't tell me components. Tell me what 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 will that potentiometer do? What is it doing? Okay. What think of it like we have started by saying there is there are electrons flowing, and this flow of electrons is what we were everything we are talking about is that this flow of electrons 
had energy. That's where we started. So we said, here is a tank full of electrons. Moving electrons have some energy. They can do some work. And we started with a basic bulb. And we said that if I take this and I connect these, these flowing electrons in a particular way called a circuit, then my electrons are doing some work. They are lighting up my bulb. That's where I started. So I'm saying flowing electrons have the energy and now they are doing some work. Then I changed this and I explained my next level, which was that the direction of flow is sometimes very important, right? I have to change the plus minus to make this component work. So that was my second point that flowing electrons, sometimes you have to be careful of the direction. Then my third point was that sometimes just by changing the direction, I can do fun stuff. I can make this car just by changing the direction. I can make this car go left and right. Oh, sorry, uh, clockwise and counterclockwise. And then I said to the students, I said, if I had two of these, one this side and one this side, can I make a, my car go forward and reverse? And I'm saying they said, yes. Just by changing the plus and minus of both my motors, I can make my car go forward and reverse. Right? It's all the flow of electrons. Okay. Now I've got this where you said that if I give, uh, I have flow of electrons here, but no flow of electrons here, then my car is turning. Yeah. And other way around also. Now my question is, how do I control this flow of electrons to turn my car 30 degrees? You are right, potentiometer, yes, but I'm saying don't, don't use component. Tell me the logic. What is happening to the flow of electrons? To change the direction of electricity and now. See, if we are changing the direction of electricity, yes. then we are going forward and reverse. Yeah. If we are saying give 100% flow of electrons here, 0% here, then my car is going 360 degree left. And other way around, I'm going 360 degree right. My question is, I want to go 30 degrees. What do I do with the flow of electrons? You, you, your solution is right, potentiometer, but I'm saying, don't say potentiometer. What is it that the potentiometer does to the flow of electrons? Uh, anyone else can also answer. Anna, they are saying uh, we want to reduce the flow of electrons. Supply. To which one? To one side. Left side. Okay. Yeah. So basically all we are saying is if I had 100% flow of electrons here and 0% here, my car was going left 360 degrees. But if I give 100% flow of electrons here, but I also give 20% or 30% or 40% here, I can control my, as you can see, see if I'm turning this, it is turning like this. But if I'm turning this while turning this, I can control, right? So you're absolutely correct. All we are doing is controlling the flow of electrons. And by controlling the flow of electrons to uh, the percentage of flow of electrons, I can make the car go any way I like, you know, 10 degree, 15 degree, 20 degree, just by saying, if I give uh, hundred percent here, and 20% here, my car will go more like this. But if I give 100% here, 80% here, my car will only turn 5 degrees. So just by changing my percentage of flow of electrons, I can control this, the direction of the car. So what I'm, the point I'm making is that if you understand electricity, which is nothing but the flow of electrons, then all of electronics is about controlling this flow of electrons. Right. So let me go back to my basics. So I, I've got my, my source of energy here and I have got 
my electrons flowing. So my electrons are flowing. They are going here inside the bulb. I'm completing my circuit and my bulb is lighting up. And we yeah, have no, whole... your point. Excuse me, Anna. I think we use voltage divider, right? Where? In the motor circuits to turn yeah, left but... or right. I, I I know you know I I know I mean we will use uh, you know the variable resistance but I'm saying right now I'm not bothered I'm talking to class six students right I'm not bothering them with anything I'm not even bothering them with voltage and and current right now I'm just asking them to think logically first if you understand if they understand the fundamentals without getting into jargon without getting into you know what is current and what is voltage and uh, you know what is uh, voltage divider i'm saying i don't need to take them there i'm dealing with class 6 students i can make it a lot of fun for them right that's why i'm avoiding the use of technical terms i'm keeping it very simple that i've got some flowing electrons flow of electrons is called electricity or electrical energy and i'm saying that energy has the ability to do work and like lighting this bulb and now i'm saying from here by discussing everything about leds and about uh, motor and all i have showed them that just by controlling this flow i've not gone into how to control the flow i'm saying just by controlling the flow there is so much i can do just by controlling the flow and that is all that i want to make them understand first that if you understand this and you, you will also see in today and tomorrow, I'll keep repeating this because when I will take you to, you know, more complex components, the logic will still be the same. The logic will be controlling the electrons. Okay. And I'm going to make some points now, right now. So I'm saying now I'm talking about, let's look at the circuit in a different way. So I wanted to control the flow of electrons. Okay. I, what can I do? And one thing, for example, I can do is I can introduce a switch. So now I'm controlling the flow of electrons. I'm not even going into how to make the circuit. Most children know how to make these kind of circuits. Okay. So I am controlling the flow of electrons by adding a simple switch. So now I've got a switch and my switch is controlling this flow of electrons. Now, here is my question to you. What do you think is happening inside the switch? Why is it that when I click once, my bulb lights up and when I click again, the bulb stops glowing. So what is happening inside this, this switch? What do you think is happening inside the switch? Anyone can answer. What is happening inside the switch? Yeah. Yeah. They are saying that when switch is on, the circuit is closed. Yeah. Okay. So, so in one way, this... Now I'm saying you're using a technical word, which is, I think they're in class six textbook. This is a closed circuit, which means electrons are flowing. This is an open circuit. Electrons are not flowing, but I, I can, if I want, I can go and explain to the students that it's the same thing. If I take, if I remove my switch and I just put it like this, then when I break my circuit, 
my bulb stops glowing. So what I'm doing physically here, I'm physically, you know, removing this crocodile clip. So by physically removing this alligator clip, I'm controlling the flow of electrons and I have got a closed circuit and I've got an open circuit. Now, instead of physically doing this, I am saying, I'm introducing a switch. And now the switch can be very far from my main circuit, right? Which is what is happening. So imagine that in your classroom, if you wanted to control the light, and if you were doing it physically, every time you would need a ladder to go up, you know, to the, to the bulb and physically remove it. Right. Which is, which is what used to happen when they had candles, right? When in olden times they had candles, somebody had to climb up, light up the candle. Okay. I'm building a concept here about electronics. Okay. And that is what I'm trying to explain that I could do it. I could physically do it. All I had to do was put a ladder, climb up and remove one wire. Now, instead of doing that, I'm using a switch. And when I'm using a switch, my, my bulb and my switch can be very far and I can still control it. Right. And which is what is happening right now. When you are, when you want to switch on the, the, the lights in your room, you just go to the switch, but the switch is doing exactly that switch is simply breaking the circuit inside the switch. There are two metal plates. When I go like this, the metal plates come apart and the circuit is open. And when I click the switch, the metal plates come together and the electrons start flowing. Now let's say I wanted to remember what we were saying here. You were saying in this motor to make the car turn left and right, you had to reduce the flow of electrons. So I'm saying, how do I reduce the flow of electrons? So what Raji Akka was saying is a potentiometer or think of it like the fans regulator. I'm only changing the switch. So instead of using this switch, I'm using a different switch. And now by turning So the problem with, with this particular thing is that, uh, uh, and anyway, I mean, uh, theoretically, if you, if you see, I can control the, uh, intensity simply by turning my switch. So what I'm explaining is that there are different types of switches, right? But all of them are doing nothing but controlling the flow of electrons. This switch was simply saying zero electrons will flow through or in the other direction, hundred percent electrons will flow through. But now I have a different switch in which I'm saying I'm controlling the percentage of the electrons flowing through. So I am saying maybe less than just by turning it, just like your fans regulator, you are controlling the intensity of this, this switch. Uh, sorry, the flow of electrons in this circuit. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Now I'm saying, try to imagine things. Okay. I said that one, one very fun part of electronics was that my, my switch could be very different, very far away from whatever it was controlling. Where else I, do you control something from very far away? For example, your remote control, right? So you have a TV remote control and you are sitting 20 feet away and you can still control. But what I'm trying to say is that children should understand this basic concept that it, everything had to do with the flow of electrons. And we were just controlling the flow of electrons by using different types of switches and electronics is about changing this switch. So these were still mechanical switches, right? I had to, they could be far away from the bulb, but I still had to physically go and do things, whether it was this switch or whether it was the potentiometer or regulator, I had to physically do things. Now, my question is, can we make this 
bulb a smart bulb what do i mean by smart i'm saying can we do something in this flow of electrons such that this bulb lights up based on when it is dark so as let's say this is a street light as the sun goes down my street light should come on now if i can do that then i'm saying from doing things physically or mechanically we are making this circuit into a smart or intelligent circuit and yes we can do that because we have some component here okay it's called ldr light dependent resistor and so so this this needs some other electronics but just logically i'm i'm explaining logically i'm saying if instead of these switches i put this ldr so i've removed these switches i have this ldr in the circuit and what this ldr does is it's made of certain material if you can see here it's made of certain material which based on how much light is falling on on this particular component it allows more or less electrons to fall, flow through and once i make this circuit right now just theoretically if i make this circuit now my circuit is a smart or intelligent circuit okay because now i don't have to be physically there i don't have to be physically there to switch it on and off or to control the intensity i can be i don't have to be anywhere near this circuit the circuit will automatically run with the sunlight so as the sun will come down my light will go and i'm saying this is all that there is to electronics that we are saying how can we make things smart or intelligent so how can we make uh, you know electronic components smart or intelligent such that they can take their own decisions right so own decisions means i am not physically operating them i have made it smart i'm saying when it is dark light up and when there is sunlight don't light up and i have done that simply by introducing some component here and i'm saying the same thing once you get into this basic understanding then i'm saying imagine that you have a fan and now i want i can control the fan with the switch right but i want to make this a smart fan i want the speed to be based on the heat in the room can i do that now that is where i'm saying you can start children to imagine things how do you think i can do this okay i am asking you how do you think i can make this fan into a smart fan such that the speed of this fan depends on the temperature of the room what do you think i can put in this circuit Shall we connect with temperature sensor, Anna? Yes. So what I'm saying is, instead of this this component, which which allowed the flow of electrons or controlled the flow of electrons based on light falling on this, all I need is some other sensor or some other component where, based on the temperature, the flow of electrons will increase or decrease. You understand? in this particular component the way this one works is that when lot of light is shining on it this material with which it is made does not allow electrons to go through so when light is falling on it no electrons pass through and hence it's a open circuit when light starts shining on it this particular material that it is made of allows more and more and more electrons to flow through if if no light is shining on it it's absolutely dark 100% electrons will flow through so i've got a smart light and like that i'm saying you can just imagine that if i had something where the flow of electrons was controlled based on the temperature 
some material okay some scientific material with the properties that uh, uh, which allows more electrons to flow through if it is becoming hotter and hotter then if it's very cold this will not allow any electrons to flow through and if it's very hot it will allow all electrons to flow through and then i have a smart fan and i'm saying that that really is the essence of electronics all we are going to do today tomorrow you know in in entire i mean in the electronic side of atl is just this we are going to learn how to control this flow of electrons by using all different types of uh, i'm right now calling it components because i don't want to introduce words uh, which you don't i'm i'm thinking of it like i'm talking to class 6 students uh, and who don't know what is like who, who don't know what is current who, who don't know what's voltage and you know what is a sensor and all these things so i'm deliberately not using those words i'm just uh, helping them build a logical uh, you know concept first that this is the logical concept all i'm doing is controlling the flow of electrons i can control the flow of electrons with physical switches or with these other electronic components and by using these electronic components i don't physically have to be there humans don't physically have to be there the machine or 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 that component or that circuit becomes intelligent <clears throat> and is based on whatever is happening in the environment and like that then you can start thinking of anything you know if i had if if instead of i i don't have a buzzer here but just imagine that if this is a buzzer and i'm saying this buzzer should sound an alarm if there is methane gas or or some other gas whatever okay so then all i'm saying is yes i mean i will have this circuit and i will have some component which can detect methane gas or or whatever gas alcohol whatever i want to right or i can say that okay now just imagine that this is a buzzer okay and i want this buzzer to uh, sound when it starts raining okay so i want this buzzer to sound when it starts raining which means i need a sensor or i need some component in this circuit which uh which will let electrons through when water falls on it and do we have that yes we have we have this uh, you know i'm not naming the sensors right now but i'm saying this is a component in which there are these metallic plates here okay and if i connect my circuit just the way i was connecting earlier okay i i am going to connect this uh, circuit like like this to uh, you know with the buzzer and whatever so i'm saying just imagine that this is my circuit now and now i have instead of this i have this component and in this component if there is no water falling on it no electrons are going to pass through so the buzzer will not sound if it will start raining basically the connections will get complete and electrons will flow through and my buzzer will sound right so now i'm i'm just saying that first you should or or the student should you know conceptually understand it what else i've got something else okay i've got this this another component it is based on you know chemical properties of this component that if i will the same thing i've got you know you, you can imagine that i can you know just simply add this to my circuit one thing here one thing here complete the circuit and this one allows electrons to flow through based on how much you turn it it's a flex sensor so if if it is straight no electrons will flow through and as you start bending it more and more and more electrons will flow through and if it is bent a lot then the circuit will be complete and where are these kind of sensors used for example all those you know new kind of gloves you if if you've seen you know in medical uh, thing they they do all kinds of surgery from far away robotic surgery and all so so now you can imagine if i have like you know five of these sensors here uh, in on a glove so if i will move this finger some particular motor will start running if i will move this something else will start run and i will have a smart glove which is going to operate my surgical equipment okay so i'm saying like that there are hundreds and hundreds of sensors this is a this is a pressure sensor now i have started using the word sensor i should not use the word sensor right now because i haven't yet told the students what a sensor is 
but what i'm saying is i'm just explaining conceptually that i have got all these kinds of electronic components today which help me make this flow of electrons intelligent or smart so this one is based on pressure the more pressure you will put on this the more electrons will flow so i can make some sort of a pressure alarm that when like outside my door if i put this when somebody will step on it my alarm will ring and i will know that somebody is entering my my room right okay let me ask if you are understanding the basic stuff so this one is called this one is called a soil sensor okay so what we do is we put it inside uh, let's say a, a a pot a plant uh, or in the in the field so it's inside the mud and the way this one will work is that um it will it detects moisture okay so now you think think of it like this so in my circuit okay um in my circuit i've introduced this and what i what i try to do is i put some amount of electricity here okay i'm using the term 5 volts i'll explain voltage and all a little later but i'm saying you you imagine this okay i am going to input 5 volts so i know let's say i won't even use voltage right now i'm saying i was putting some energy 5 units of energy i'm putting so this one is in the mud so inside is all mud okay there is some plant and i put it inside inside mud on this prong i am putting in 5 units of energy then i am measuring this side so this side is getting 5 uh, units of energy i am measuring on this side and this side is showing me zero units of energy coming out did you understand i had a pot i had put it inside the pot the pot is full of mud i input 5 volts here on this this prong and on this prong my reading is 0 volt what can i say about the mud so so this is what i'm trying to say oh. so i've got a pot here this is full of mud mud okay i am inputting 5 5 units of energy and i'm measuring here and i'm getting zero units of energy out so what in between this what can you tell me about this mud okay do you think there is water in the mud did you understand my question i have a flower pot in the flower pot i have put this particular component and what i can do is i can measure flow of electrons on this and on this so now i am saying i am i am inputting 5 units of electrons here and i am getting zero units of electrons here what can you tell me about the mud and my question is do you think is there water in the mud the soil is wet na hmm? the soil is wet moisture if the soil is wet will i get if i input 5 units of energy what will i get out dry and when the soil is dry it gives zero yeah. yes because i'm saying now i'm making a jump here that i'm i'm assuming that you know what happens with water 
but you are right if the soil is absolutely dry then if i input 5 and i get output 0 i can say the soil is dry because if the soil is moist then if i i'm inputting 5 volts of energy i should get something out i should get 3 or 4 or maybe even all 5 out if i put 5 and i get out 5 i can very safely say that this this mud is full of water because what i'm inputting i'm out getting the same output but just by measuring the difference I can talk about the state of the soil here, right? Okay, let, let's, let's, okay, I've made a jump here maybe. So let me go back to my basics first, okay? Um, okay. So, so this is what we were discussing, right? We had all these um, uh, source of, uh, you know, uh, energy and we were saying that 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 energy or the moving electrons was doing some work so now i'm talking about how do we measure uh, this electricity okay this energy called electricity how do we measure it and now i'm explaining two more things to you now this is maybe more although i think even in class 6 they do talk about voltage and and current but if not in class six, I'm sure in class seven and eight, they would be talking about uh, voltage and current. So I'm saying I made this, uh, you know, analogy with you. I said that this is a tank full of energy. Or in this case, now I'm saying think of it like a tank full of water. Okay. And there is a pipe connected to this, which is like the wire from this tank. And what we are saying is how much water is going to come out. Okay. So we are trying to measure how much this is a tank full of electrons. What is happening to the flow of electrons when I attach some sort of a wire here? So it depends on how much water is in the tank, right? If I have a lot of water in the tank, then I have a lot of water coming out. And this is same as saying, as this, this one is showing you here, that the more batteries I add, I am filling in the tank with more and more and more water. So if I have only one, I will have less flow of electrons. If I put two, I'll have more. If I have put three, even more, four, even more. And so this is one. So this is the idea of what is the voltage. So voltage means, um, see, another way of understanding this is if I have some rocks, how high am I taking the rock? So, okay, let's do this exercise. Let's say I have some rocks. I'm just going to stop share here. Okay. Um, so let's say I have a rock. Let's assume this is a rock. Okay. Now here at the ground level, I had some, let's say some glass bottle. And I take this rock here and I drop it. Versus I take this rock and I drop it from a, from more height. Which one do you think has will break the this glass bottle when I'm lower or when I'm higher? If I drop the rock from here, will it do more damage? Or if I drop the rock from here, it'll do more damage. Higher one. Yeah. So the higher the I take this rock, the more energy it has. Right. And this is, I mean, if you're a science teacher, then you know potential versus kinetic. But anyway, the higher and higher and higher I take this rock, the more energy it has to do work. And the higher and higher and higher I take this rock is like saying I'm increasing the voltage. I'm increasing the voltage in my circuit. Or if I talk about water, it's like more and more and more pressure because I'm increasing the height. So this is voltage. Voltage is and that is why voltage is called potential difference because we are measuring it from some ground level. If this rock is at the ground level, it can do no work. It doesn't have any energy to do any work. 
if i raise it a little it has some energy to do work if i raise it more it has more energy if i raise it very high it has a lot of energy so this potential difference from the ground is voltage so this is my first thing that i have to understand that in electrons how high am i throwing the electrons from is voltage potential difference then my second thing is how many rocks do i have if i have got only one rock and both of them are here then they don't have any any energy but if i have two rocks i drop them from this height they have more energy than one rock and if i have three i have even more energy right so i'm saying understand this conceptually that if i have only one rock and it is at ground level it has no energy if it is at one level it has some energy if it is at two level it has more energy three level more energy but if i have this rock which is at one unit it has some energy but if i have two rocks they are still at one unit but they have more energy because i have got two rocks and if i have got three rocks and they are still at one unit i have got even more energy because i have got three rocks so how many rocks i have is current so that's the flow of electrons you know per unit of time so if i have more and more and more rocks more and more and more electrons flowing through i have more current i have um, higher current and if i take the rocks higher and higher and higher the potential difference keeps going up i have more voltage so voltage is how how many cells i have uh, how high am i taking this this rock and current is how many rocks do i have and that is what this diagram is trying to show you that in this i have only one rock and i have not raised it i have raised it only to one unit and if i raise it to two units i have more water coming out or in this or in this case more electrons and hence you can see the intensity of the light at one unit it had this much intensity at two units it has more intensity three more four more five lot of intensity and what they are trying to show here is this relationship between water as a example and with voltage and voltage and current are going hand in hand the more the voltage the more the current and they are showing it here as the water coming out so if i have more water and i am taking it to a higher height i have more electrons coming and then what they are trying to show here is that if this pipe becomes narrower what will happen so the number of obstacles in the path of this circuit is called do you know what do you think this obstacles are so the current was flowing or the voltage whatever let's say the current the electrons were flowing but i have more and more obstacles in the path what are what is this obstacle called resistance resistance right so i'm saying uh these are the only three things for now that we need to understand and we can cover a lot of uh you know a lot of things in the atl lab okay i'm i'm going to take a small pause if you have any questions please ask okay so so the question is that we were talking about a car and we were saying that by controlling the flow of electrons we can make the car turn and the question is instead of using a potentiometer um see now that if you understand the concept of resistance then when we say pot or potentiometer what we are saying is when we are turning this it is like adding more obstacles to the path so the current the, the electrons were flowing if i put it in one direction it will allow 100% of the electrons to go through and as i keep turning it 
it's like adding more and more and more obstacles to the path of that flow of electrons which is what i was trying to show here so potentiometer here means no obstacles and all my uh, electrons are flowing through okay so this is at one direction and then i'm saying if i turn this a little it's like saying i've got little more obstacles and if i turn it even more i'm saying i've got lots of obstacles so first i'm saying understand that don't just use the word potentiometer potentiometer simply means variable resistance so that is what i was trying to vary okay i was trying to vary the resistance in this in this particular circuit i was varying the resistance and that is what i was using to turn the vehicle now your question is instead of using this can i use something else and i'm saying you can use anything that i said for example let let's say i take my ldr so instead of the pot i have now put an ldr here right as i will shine more light more electrons or reverse as it is darker more electrons will flow through right so i'm saying now i'm controlling the speed of this so imagine this i i put two ldrs one on this motor and one on this motor and by changing the light that i'm going to shine on on either one of them i can control the speed you understand because i can shine more light on this and less light on this and then i can control the speed and then i can control how it is going to turn i can even control just the going forward and reverse direction by putting two ldrs and changing the amount of light falling on both the ldrs do you understand so i'm saying if you understand it conceptually that my pot was doing nothing but changing the flow then i can add any sensor i i mean so to say i can put a soil sensor and by increasing or decreasing the moisture i can control the flow of electrons so i can control the speed and hence the direction by using theoretically any sensor or or most sensors but of course the point is which one is logical here so logical is i could use a flex sensor i could control i could you know imagine that there is a wire going here and now i'm controlling which i've got two of these and i can control the flow by by you know bending one of them and not bending the other so the other is straight this is bent i'm supplying lot of volt, uh, electricity here so this one is going to go faster this one is going to go slower and my car will turn like this right so i'm saying i can use this sensor because the sensor is nothing it's just controlling the flow i can i can take my 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 pressure sensor i can put two pressure sensors apply more pressure in one and less in other i can control the car i'm i'm saying it may not be the best use of this sensor in this uh, particular case but theoretically that's what sensors do and then it's for me i mean if i wanted if there was some and and this is where this is an interesting question because now if you think of it like manak okay and you think of manak and i'm saying i can think of it in reverse i understand i have a pressure sensor and if there is more pressure something is going to happen then i can ask myself that can i is this useful in some in some vehicle and i i can say yes it it is useful maybe uh, maybe if i have you know maybe trucks inside a mine and they are putting lots of you know whatever you know whatever mineral they are extracting coal or something and maybe that's that gives me some sort of a measure i and i can use that pressure sensor to control something here and then all i am looking for is a interesting example of where can i use a pressure sensor in a you know vehicle you understand so i'm saying to answer your question yes i can put any sensor because just by controlling the flow of electrons i can control the speed or uh, and hence i can do whatever i want i can make it go i can change the speed by saying uh, you know let all electrons flow, flow through on both the wheels it will go very fast i can say only you know 20% of electrons in both which will go very slow or i can control the direction by saying uh, you know 10% here 80% here and i'll make the car turn does that answer your question 
Any other questions? Shall we have a break?